Welcome friends, I am Dalek Cookie and here is my Master Clues Guide. I will cover each type of clue and the best ways to deal with them, as well as how to get a Master Clue in the first place. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to record a few individual clue scrolls I get and upload those. Master Clues have extremely high requirements in quests, minigames, skills and combat. If you want to prepare yourself for camping Master Clues, the toughest clues in my opinion need say a favour, skilling outfits like the Lumberjack, Angler and the Prospector outfits, and a spirit tree that you have grown yourself. I men should also brew some Greenman's Ale M and expect to camp many lower level clues for evil and Mercury requirements, such as flared trousers, Vandal's cloak, and the Zamrak Volhelm. There are two ways to get a master clue. You can get one as a drop from lower level clues, or you can hand in a set of easy through to elite clues to the NPC Watson on Zaya. The drop rates of master clues from lower level clues have not been released as I make this video, but at a guess it is 1 to 50 to 100 from easy clues and better from better clues. Camping medium or high clues may be viable, and I'll be sure to leave an annotation here when rates are released. Camping easy clues is great for Iron Men, who need to gather clue rewards from remote clues anyway. If you want to hand in a set of clues, here are the best ways to get each individual tier of clue. If you're a rich Max main, like me, you can skip all this by buying implings. Gourmet implings for easy clues, with a drop rate of 1 in 25. Eclectic implings for medium clues, for a drop rate of 1 in 25. Magpies for hard clues, a drop rate of 1 in 50, or cheaper and nature implings at 1 in 100, and dragon implings for elite clues with a drop rate of 1 in 50. Personally, I buy easy through to hard if I want to camp master clues, as dragon implings are very expensive. If you're an Iron Man, or you want to get your own clues, easy clues are best gained from pickpocketing ham guards or from killing thugs in the Edgeville dungeon with a ring of wealth imbued. The Ring of Wealth imbued doubles the drop rate of clue scrolls in the wilderness, so it's going to be very common in this guide. Medium clues can be got from force spawning eclectic implings or from cannoning Valdor guards with medium diary. An eclectic impling will always spawn in this region in the south of Pro Pro, so catching eclectics in this area until you catch one that spawns here is a really good way to get him. Then stand at the spawn point continuously catching the impling. Stand to the west or east of him so that if you fail, He'll run in a direction where you get a second chance at catching him before he goes over a stupid hedge. There are a few other spawn points if it's busy. Hard clues are best gotten from barraging warped jellies or from killing hellhounds in the wilderness of a ring of wealth imbued. Both of these methods have a 1 in 64 chance of a hard clue per kill. Elite clues are more controversial. The fastest method is for lava dragons in the wilderness with a ring of wealth at a drop rate of 1 in 125. However, PKs will slow you down. Then an artist is also in the wilderness, with a drop rate of 1 in 50 with your Ring of Wealth, and it's also a great GP per hour. Outside the wilderness, Barrows is the fastest method, at 1 in 33 per chest. However, Zora is only 1 in 75, and is better money and has its own pet that you can try to get. Now that we have our clues, let's take them to Watson. He is found in the Hasidious region of Zaya, near the bank and southeast catacombs entrance. He will take your clues and give you a master clue. After receiving your master clue, you can give them another set of clues to hold. Through this, you can effectively have three master clues. One you have, one Watson is waiting to give you, and a set of easy to elite clues ready to give to Watson. Okay, fair warning, I do expect you to pause for this guide if you want to use my list of clues. I don't want this to be mammal length, just, you know, just pause if you need it. For clues involving digging, except for three parters, you can expect a tough fight. In multi-combat, you'll find a Zerosian ambush. Three members of a purple army, each using a different combat style. They can hit up to about 35, so take care. Dehide and protect from range or melee, then targeting the range or melee first works well. In single combat, there'll be a Brissikian mage, using unique cabbage-based attacks. There is no protect from cabbage, so overhead prize is useless. Just DPS race or make use of safe spots to flinch him. Anagrams are present in lower level puzzles, we have new ones now too, most of them for NPCs that otherwise never interacted with. In addition to anagrams, there are now also ciphers. These are where one letter in the alphabet is substituted for another. Generally, these appear to be basic Caesar ciphers. Both ciphers and anagrams lead to puzzle boxes or light boxes. 
there are three new puzzle boxes with the master clues. All are reasonably easy with clearly distinguishable squares. You can complete these by working down the first, second, then third row. Then complete the bottom left four squares, then the bottom two middle squares. Then rearrange the last three squares until they are correct. With practice, you can complete puzzle boxes without a defined strategy, by understanding where squares need to go and which squares are already set up to be completed fastest. You can use software that will tell you exactly which squares to click, which will be faster than a new player, but experienced players are faster as they click multiple times per tick and plan a few ticks ahead as they know exactly where they want to move their squares. The new puzzle boxes are Zora, Cerberus and the Gnome Child. Some NPCs in Wilderness give you puzzle boxes, so try not to get PK doing them. Unfortunately, there is another problem with new puzzle boxes. I'm afraid to tell you, well, I've, I've been permanently banned for flaming out Jagex employees, the inclusion of yet another disgusting meme in their content. I no longer have an account to showcase clues on, so this guide is over. Bye! Anagram and Cypher NPCs may give you any of the puzzle boxes or the light box puzzle. These are boxes of light bulbs that are switched on or off by the eight switches before I did. These are hard. Seriously, we went from grade school maths to this. There are three methods for these boxes, short of just being a genius. I'm certainly not smart enough to do these. And to protect my fragile ego, I'm going to assume you're not either. Method one is an algorithm. I'm not going to read this out. It looks daunting though, right? This algorithm simply tests every combination of switches. As you get used to it, you can click multiple steps per tick and half the time you'll be done well before you reach the end of the sequence. The second method is to isolate light bulbs. Start at the top left light bulb and click each switch. If only one switch turns the light bulb on, on or off, you found a winner. If not, move to the second light bulb and repeat. When you find a light bulb controlled by a single switch, you know the necessary position of that switch. Make sure your signal light bulb is on and never press the cognate switch again. Repeat until enough switches being ignored that you can solve a puzzle or resort to method three. Method three is spam click and pray. I know you're ready to click away from this guide thinking, please, I can't do that. That's okay my friends, this method is for you. Just spam click all of the buttons as fast as you can until they do what you want. The time it will take to solve a light box puzzle with this method varies wildly. Just aim to get lots of lights on. If even this is beyond you, I'm, I'm sure our robot overlords will soon be able to do light boxes for you, don't worry. For hot and cold puzzles, you need to visit Jural from a making history quest. He is west of our dawn and will give you a strange object. This acts like the enchanted key from the making history quest, alerting you if you are closer or further away from a digging spot. Except this one hurts you. You can keep the strange object from your first clue and use it in all future ones. Do be aware, excessive use of this object will kill you. Start by using the strange object. Then step one north and use it again. Is it warmer, colder or the same? If it's the same, walk one step east and use it again. From this you should know which direction your target is, so teleport to a city in that direction. Check a step north and east again for your next direction. You should be able to narrow down roughly where it is, and when it gets warm or hot, track it down on foot. There are 116 locations for this, so Jagex really wants you to figure out yourself. Prepare for a fight, there will be a Zerosian ambush or a Brasikian mage. You are familiar with emote clues from lower level clues, but master emote clues are truly brutal. Some difficult and tradable such as the arc light are required, but Iron Men especially are in for a rough time. Here's a small list of difficult items in your kick locations. A double agent will appear, but he's just going to melee you. Special mentions for Castle Drac and Emote Clue. Here's a map of how to get to it. I hate my ditch and anything that sends me there. There are also plenty of coordinates, many in annoying places. There's nothing too special about these, but expect a Zerosian ambush or a Brasikian mage. Failure for Bard writes poems about items, but despite not knowing what he's writing about, use the item on him and he'll be happy. These are generally untradeable or annoying for Iron Men to punish them for existing. The most painful item for Iron Men here is Greenland's ALM. Three part clues give you three short clues to complete, each giving you a third of the next clue. Some require to wear equipment to have a certain stat bonus. Special mentions be if you're feeling brave, dig beneath the dragon's eye clue. It's in the Legends Quest dungeon. You need a lockpick, a pickaxe, an unpowered orb with a runes to trap cast a charge orb spell, and a spade. You do not need a bravery potion if you've already completed the quest. Also to Anger Abbot Langley for requiring a negative prayer bonus, where nothing but an ancient staff. For the XYZ ABCD type clues, 
go to the fairy ring XYZ, then walk A steps north, B steps east, C steps south, D steps west. Really easy. Sherlock makes a return with some truly evil challenges. You may need Prospector, Angler or Lumberjack gear. Most hated to be unprepared player is Angle for an Anglerfish in your finest fishing gear. Piscarelli's favour takes roughly 6 hours. Angler outfits take roughly 7 hours with a team that always succeeds at fishing trawler. So have fun, I've been through it too, just deal with it. The rewards from new clues are too numerous for me to bother listing, but I do really like the Ale of the Gods. The average clue will contain some dragon equipment, some runes, maybe botanical pies or herbs. There's also the Bloodhound pet, which I really want. Thank you for watching this guide, I hope I have been helpful to you. Please comment with feedback so I can improve and feel free to ask any questions. And yeah, do the whole like or whatever, I don't know how this works man.